Hi guys, Squid here. I'm back with some train simulator. This is another um, JT um, Just Trains pack. It actually came with the last one I did, the Voyager. It's another variation of the Voyager. This time it's the um, AD Voyager JT Class 220 CCA. Don't really know what the letters mean. I'm sure that means more to you than it does to me if you're a train buff. Anyway, I've decided to do this one. This is drive the last ever cross-country service from Brighton to Birmingham using XC's 220 OT1 on the 1430 to Birmingham New Street. Now, if you actually have a look at Birmingham on the map, which I should do now, you will see Birmingham is in fact here, which is pretty much, it's quite a central city in um in the in England it's the second largest city London being the biggest Birmingham is here New Street station is right in the middle of this lot um, it's a very big station New Street station there it is there Birmingham New Street been there a few times it's next to the NEC which is the National Exhibition Centre and if we just zoom all the way out Brighton on the other hand is on the south coast right down here Brighton being uh, home of many things the 70s mod movement with the mopeds, <laughs> amongst other things. Interesting enough, there is no direct route from Brighton up to Birmingham. Um, it has to You have to come into London and then switch and go back out again. So I'm not quite sure how this scenario manages this route, but I'm going to try and see what happens. And here we are. Whee! Hello driver, please press T to load passengers and then set up your cab, ready for departure at 14.22. Roger, Roger. Okay, press uh, T. And um, let's see what else we have to do here. Put the key in. Uh, I'm going to put this thing to neutral. Clear the alarm. Uh, what else did I have to do? Crikey. Oh, yeah, the headlights. Let's put those on today. Like that. It's all coming back. Let's clear the DRA system. And. Oh, wipers. Blimey. Um, there we go. It's raining in Brighton, apparently. And we're open. Now, oh, is there anything left to do? Let me think. Think, 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 think. We don't need to do the radio test. We could put the illuminations on the display. Instrumentation lighting. I do like having that on. Um, the only other thing I'll need to do is put it in drive. Which gives us the alarm. Now then, I think, if I remember my training, my last Voyager, I think that's it. I think we're ready to cook on gas. So I don't know what. What's I? Let's have a look at our. Oh right, go via three bridges. Okay, pick up passengers from Gatwick Airport. Now Gatwick Airport is on the south. Hang on a minute. Why am I not going to Birmingham? Hmm. Gatwick Airport, South London. Croydon's not far up from that. There's no mention. We're not even going through London here. From Brighton to Birmingham. I don't understand. I do not understand this task list. Okay, the door should be shutting any second. Next stop, Gatwick Airport, 1450. Okay, let's do this then. This is beyond our merry way. So, the last video, well, three-parter, wasn't it? The Voyager one. Had a very warm reception to that video. A lot of people seemed to think that that route was really awesome. I think a lot of people enjoyed me driving the Voyager. They were very surprised at my ability to drive the Voyager, shall I say. Uh, and the other thing is, I've actually ordered one of those Railworks things, those Railworks controllers that I've been talking about in my streams. Let's just slow down here. Don't want to break any speed limits. 25 speed limit. Let's get as close as we can to 25. Um, they're basically a control which kind of looks... They have these kind of controls on them. And lots of mappable buttons. And I thought it'd be kind of fun. Especially when I'm streaming. Because you know when I'm streaming with, the, with the, the trucks. I've got the steering wheel out and you can see it on camera. And the throttle and everything. The brake pedals. I thought it'd be kind of cool to have something for train simulators. So I've ordered one. But it only comes into stock on the 18th of January I think it is. So, yeah, end of January, I should have it. 
cross country. How many carriages? One, two, three, four. Okay, speed limit up. It's a miserable day coming out of Brighton. Oh, what a lovely sound. I do like the authenticity of that. I can't believe how well sound insulated this cab is. It's incredible. Whoa, 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 whoa. Don't want to hit 40. Right, 75. Let's do it. Let's have a look what the passengers are up to. It's him again! He was in the last train. And him. They're stalking me. The same people <laughs> in the same configuration. Dear me. Can we not jump carriage somehow? No. That's a shame. You should be able to jump from carriage to carriage. Like, I want to be able to go into the different seats. I should definitely let you do that. Jump from carriage to carriage and go inside the different seats to have a look around. Right, so I think it said we're expecting some issues on the way. It's not going to be completely smooth. ETA. ETA 14.47. It doesn't actually say when we're due in. It just says go via three bridges. What that means to me, what I read that as, as there's going to be trouble on the way. And when I say trouble, I mean... If it's not giving me... If it's not giving me an ETA, actually that's not true. It says arriving Gatwick at 1450. My ETA is 1447. I think it's not giving me a time here on the bottom left because the next um, on the task list is the three bridges and there's no actual timestamp for that. So I suspect, I suspect once we pass, oh well, I suspect once we pass um, three bridges. It should change and put the timestamp on. I've got 100% brake on. I may have to. Hit. Now there is an emergency brake down here. Where is it? Uh, there. I may have to hit that. Oh no! It looks like that's a double yellow. So it looks like we're chasing a red at the moment. Possibly chasing another train. It's gone green. I suspect we might be able to cruise along. This has all the trademarks of following a slower train. That's my view anyway. Because I had a double yellow, which meant the next signal could be red. I'm actually getting better at this game, I think. I'm getting the hang of it. And, uh, and also of the different styles of train. Um, which is interesting. It's a bit like the racing cars in Assetto Corsa or something. They all have their own style and they have to adjust. You have to adapt the way that you actually drive them. And if you're like me, you want to make videos of different trains or different cars. You keep hopping from one to the other. You never really get good at any particular one. So, because I'm back in the Voyager again, I know how this train works. I know that it has a dynamic braking system now, so I know that's why it doesn't stop very quickly. And unlike other trains that have, you know, if you go more than 80% on the braking, uh, you'll, that will be classed as emergency braking. You lose points for that. But on this train, 100% is fine uh, because it's dynamic, which means it's, it's engine braking effectively. And that's why it's not actually very good. If you really do need to stop quickly, you need to hit that button there. That gives you full-on braking, apparently. So, you know, all of these things I learn by making a video, and then I get comments and messages and emails and Facebook messages and everybody else. The rest of the world tells me how to actually drive these trains. And then they also pull me up on the little details, such that, you know, the train that my mother gets down is not, in fact, a Voyager 221. It's actually a Pendolino. <laughs> And that the Voyager 221 is a four-car train and all this other kind of stuff. I'm sorry, I'm not a rail expert, but you can expect errors. Uh, oh, slow down, slow down, slow down. You can expect errors in my videos. And, you know, as long as you... I don't mind being corrected. I don't mind being informed. I don't mind any of those things. If you're going to do it, though, you know, if you know about these things, then let us know. Let the people watching know. Let me know. But don't be a dick, okay? Some people, 
they have this kind of little high and mighty attitude to it and when they're correcting you you just get this feeling that they're being a little bit patronizing or condescending or you know how come you don't know this don't be so ridiculous you know hate attitudes like that everybody knows something and we can't all be experts can we so be nice to your fellow men right another double yellow signal so I'm gonna hit get ready for a stop but again I've got a feeling that by the time I get there it'll be double yellow again there you go double yellow I can see it straight ahead and it's gone green yeah we're chasing a slower train if I go 90 I'm gonna catch that train up what I need to do is try and work out roughly what speed that trains doing now I do wonder though if I was a real train driver would I now have would I be able to you know phone up control and just say what's the hold up and he'll say oh you've got a train ahead um, it's only doing 70 or something so you need to adjust your speed do 70 and you'll be fine and he'll be pulling over into the into you know track whatever at the next station and then you can pass him whereas in this I don't know what the hold up is so I'm just gonna cruise at 70 and see if I can maintain green lights I can at the moment While we do that, we'll have a look at the scenery. What station is this? I can't read that. Ha has Hasix? Has it went past so quickly and in such a blurred fashion that I totally miss what that said. I'm not expecting this journey to be anything like as detailed as the last one. Um, because I think, as part of the scenario package, they give you this train and they... They put it on different scenarios which already exist. Um, ones from Railworks themselves. Uh, is it Railworks? The people who make this game. You know, the, the guys who make this game. I can't remember if they're called Railworks. I'm getting mixed up with the controller now. There you go. Double yellow headset. And it's green. So I'm estimating that. I'm estimating the train speed to be about 70. So I'm going to cruise at 70. And see if that gets me where I want to go. Now, can I put the wipers on intermittent or not? No, apparently not. Apparently there's no intermittent setting on this particular train. Double yellow again. Interesting, I'm not seeing single yellows. Just going from double to green. Which I don't fully understand. If you, has anybody seen this paint scheme on the British rails? Oh, what's this station? Burgess. Burgess. Burgess Hill was that? Burgess Hill. Does anybody know Burgess Hill? Uh, if you take a commute regularly out of Brighton, which a lot of people do, and I mean a lot of people, come up from Brighton every day into London, and uh, you probably know this line very well. You probably know these stations very well. You probably think to yourself, "Oh my God, I actually pass there every day." <laughs> That's how I felt when I when I remember when they did the journey from um, was it Ipswich down to or was it Colchester? I think it was Colchester down to Liverpool Street Station. That's the journey I used to take every day, and so I recognised all the stations on route. It's so cool to see stuff in real life actually implemented in the game, and that's one of the things that's that endears me to Sims. Westfield is that? I think this is Westfield. Looks like it. Let's try picking up a bit of speed. I think we can do 70. ETA 1445. We need to be there at Gatwick at 1450. So at the moment we're doing okay for time. Let's zoom out a little bit. Get a look at this scenery. Ooh, cloned houses. It's nice being up at this high, you actually get a proper look at the scenery. Like on the left there, you can see, you know, that kind of thing can be implemented very quickly, whereas laying out these roads and stuff takes a bit more time. And that's one of the things that impressed me about that Scottish route, was it was just so detailed. All the way along, it was so fabulously detailed. And the good thing about this game is you can actually make the stuff yourself. That's, you know, one of the cool things. 
just gone green. So that train is up on that next section somewhere. Yeah, the fact that you get a world editor and you can make your own scenarios, make your own journeys, I think that that's just brilliant. If you've got time on your hands and you like that kind of thing, you should definitely do it. That is a really high bridge. Speaking of bridges, I really should get back to doing the um, bridge project. Oh, I'll tell you something else this game supports. It supports the Xbox 360 controller, which I thought... I was going through the control menus, and it supports the Xbox 360 controller, which is interesting, because you can apparently use um, the, the thumb controls to look around with the camera, so I wouldn't need to have the mouse cursor, which is another interesting thing. And I have actually bought one of those adapters that you can get. So that, excuse me, one of those adapters that you can get that you plug into your PC and it lets you plug an Xbox 360 controller, well not plug it in, effectively lets the Xbox 360 controller wirelessly communicate with your PC and use it as a game controller. Which is, you know, a perfectly acceptable way of playing some games, actually. To have an analog controller is always going to be better than just having keyboard. So if I wasn't getting the rail controller thing I might uh, I would probably have set that up. Let's give him a little toot. I think that was Fred. I'm sure that was Fred in that truck, in that train. Uh oh, sh oh that's not a red for me. Oh my life! <laughs> I thought I was about to go through a red then. I thought I'd screwed up. Right, I'm going to pick up speed now. What I'm worried about is my ETA is 1450. My arrival time is 1450 and I'm ETA'd now at 1444. I have lost a lot of time. So I'm going to see if I can get up to 90 now. Hoping that that train actually pulled in at that platform. Eighty-five. 57. Back off on the throttle. Don't think this has a cruise control on it. Some trains do. If you press the C key, you get a cruise control and it kind of locks the speed in. Um, but I don't think this is one of them. Which is quite annoying because the cruise control is actually really bloody useful on this thing. There we go. 88, that'll do. We'll just keep adjusting the throttle a little bit. Oh, look at this bridge. Oh, that's cool. That's cool. That looks so good. Even if it is a misty day, that looks good. Looks like I need to put the wipers back on again. Hello, wipers. Thank you. Six miles. And the ETA time's good, 14.43, that's good, because we've picked up speed. So if we can maintain this, we'll be there early, which is great use for everybody, passengers and me. I love the way when you go through the signals you change red like it should do. As a driver you would never see that normally, because you can't put your camera back. You know, you're sat here, you don't realize when you go through it, signal's red. I wonder who actually invented the whole signaling system. I mean, it's very well established. I'm pretty certain it's got to be somebody British. And the only reason I say that is because this is where the, ra the railroad... Blah, blah. I'll start again. This is where the railways were invented. Stevenson's rocket and all that. I expect they had to invent the signaling for that. Could be wrong. I'm pretty sure right now somebody is hitting the comment button <laughs> about to correct me. Squirrel! <laughs> How dare you suggest a British event? <laughs> Sorry! Right, speed limit come down to 84 miles, so we're going to have to get ready. I think with this train you need to start decelerating about a mile out from the platform because of the dynamic brake. It's just not as effective as a, a normal locomotive brake. but I'm going to drop the speed down. We're quite early, actually. Just looking at the, the time we're going to be in there. In fact, I better slow down now. 
Let's get, get that speed shaved off. There we go. Lovely jubbly. You're supposed to do that before you go into the tunnel, by the way. Although, if you live in houses nearby, you probably suggest that you shouldn't do that. But that's what you're meant to do. Actually, not inside the tunnel, but just before the tunnel. If you get inside the tunnel, the sound will carry a very long way. And uh, anybody nearby will not be happy with that. Especially if they're in bed on the night shift. Doing really well for time. In fact, I'm going to be able to get out of the train and go and have a cup of tea. Which you can't in this game, interesting enough, but you can in Tube Simulator. I don't know if you watch me stream Tube Simulator, but you can... Ooh, speeding apparently. You can actually get out of the train and walk around the platform. <laughs> That's brilliant. I don't know why they don't do that in this game. Not only can you walk on the platform in Tube Simulator, you can walk down the carriages, you can open all the doors. And in fact, if any of the doors are open, it won't let you set off. It's kind of authentic like that. Okay, I'm going to start decelerating. Probably a 30% break, I reckon. We're on 1.3 miles out, so we've got plenty of time. We're going to get there really early. In fact, it probably won't let us leave until 1452. Don't know why I anticipated it would take me so long to get here, though. Right, let's let's go a bit heavier on the braking. The problem with this kind of weather is the view isn't quite as good. Right, let's get it down to about forty, then cruising. I reckon. I'll do. No, 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 no. Don't accelerate. Don't accelerate. Good grief. Let's have a look at the scenery. It's a very big yard, actually. Very big yard. Okay. I'm going to start decelerating properly now. I do not want to overshoot 